Thank you so much for coming along today. And special thanks to the organisers, particularly Margot Zata from ICA Poland, for inviting me to present at Contested Infrastructures. I hope this will be an occasion to forge new solidarities and alliances, and I'm really sorry that I can't join you in person. I live in Naam, Melbourne, and I would like to acknowledge the Bunwaran as the traditional custodians of the land on which I live and work, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. In my curatorial work as a writer and maker, I have been researching and thinking about the intertwinements of creating, curating, criticism and care. The etymology of the word care is derived from the Latin word curatus or curare, which means to cure, to heal and also to curate. So what are the intertwinements of curating and caring, art criticism and listening? Whether ruminating on viral care and collective care within cultural institutions, healing, love and feminism, to care is to recognise all bonds between both humans and non-humans, between humans and their systems, their infrastructures and institutions, and to attend to their fragility carefully. So here are some of the provocations that I've been thinking about in my work as a curator and an art critic. What is the relationality of art criticism and care? And what is the ongoing role of care in these times of crises? And how can care be deployed as a foundational network and ecosystem that actively reconfigures relationships. Today, I would like to share with you my curation and editing of uh, Paradise Camp by Yuki Kihara at the 59th Venice Biennale in 2022. Uh, I'm using this very much as a case study. I know that some of you were able to see the exhibition last year. Yuki was the first transgender or fafafina Samoan, Pacifica, Indigenous and Asian artist to represent Aotearoa, New Zealand. And I very much use the modality of care at the heart of the project to amplify the overlooked voices of Yuki and her community. The exhibition comprised um, an a exhibition in Venice and in Sydney and a substantial publication and a forum. Here are some of the uh, imagery of behind the scenes, uh, delivering crates into Venice, uh, and also the uh, graphics. It was very important for us to have a Polynesian sensibility and palette and typography in all our collateral. So where is Samoa? For orientation, Samoa is in the Pacific and it's clustered uh, around uh, islands with up here as the capital where Yuki lives. And fortunately, I was able to visit her in March 2020, miraculously two weeks before the world went into severe lockdown and border closure. Previously, I was aware of Yuki's work because she had had a solo acquisitive exhibition at the Met Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York in 2008. And her work had been previously included in the Biennales of Bangkok, Sakahan, Honolulu and the Asia Pacific Triennial in Brisbane. When Yuki first saw Paul Gauguin's post-impressionist paintings at the Met in 2008, she actually saw reflections of herself and her community in Samoa. She wondered if in fact Gauguin had been looking not only at Samoa, but at the Fafafine or transgender community. Because in fact, Gauguin had traveled to Auckland en route to Tahiti. We know this because he signed the uh, visitor's book where he would have seen Maori cultural treasures. 
Yuki then decided to audaciously and irreverently turn the uh, patriarchal colonial gaze back on itself and recast select paintings by Paul Gauguin with her own community with the Fafa Fine. Here is an example of three Tahitians on the left by Paul Gauguin and Yuki's photographic and luscious version, three Fafa Fine. The project was shot on location from rural villages, churches, plantations, rivers, beaches and heritage sites and abandoned houses. And Yuki selected key landmarks in the Alepata district of Upolo Island so that the, store, so that the photographs carry stories, histories and politics of place. She works very much like a cinematographer, sourcing locations and building a cast and crew. Here are some examples of behind the scenes of how we worked on location. Um, and we had uh, headquarters and wardrobe, um, hair and makeup. We also sought permission from traditional landowners. Here is a clip of the photo shoot on Upolo Island involving over 100 local people um, and places of cultural significance. My name is Natalie King. I'm a curator based in Melbourne, and I'm really thrilled to be working with an artist like Yuki, who is immeasurably creative, uh, habitually outspoken, very politicised and socially engaged artist who is working with uh, many communities here in Samoa to produce a new body of work for Venice. My new body of work that's going to be shown at the Venice Biennale uh, is entitled Paradise Camp. Uh, Paradise Camp was inspired by an essay that was written by Nahuya Teru Kotoku, uh, who described how some of the models in Paul Gugan's paintings may have been Mahu. I also looked at the paintings of Paul Gugan on the occasion of my solo exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York in 2008, and then realized that the models in the painting not only looked Samoan, but they also looked Fafafine. Um, hence why we have uh, Samoan Fafafine models upcycling Paul Gugan paintings as a way to critique the colonial heteronormative gaze from an indigenous perspective. Paradise Camp has been eight years in the making. The process involved a series of consultations with members of my Aina, traditional landowners, the government, and the Fafafine and Fatama community in Samoa. Gaining the support of the local community helped to stage a high-level production which featured over 35 cast and 20 crew members based locally. The photo shoot took place in some of the most beautiful locations across Opolo Island that are currently under threat by the impact of climate change. Paradise Camp is the most ambitious project to date in my art practice. Here are some examples of Yuki's upcycling of key paintings by Paul Gauguin. And you can see how the um, resemblance is uncanny and remarkable. Here's a work called uh, When Will You Marry uh, with Tanya and Lucina, and When Will You Marry shot on location in uh, Upolo Island. This is the way that we installed the exhibition uh, in Venice in the Arsenale. We really wanted a strong Polynesian feel and importantly, we included an archive because artists like Yuki have, um, she has a very much a research methodology and I wanted to reveal these aspects of her um, research in both the exhibition and the publication. Here are some more install shots. And here are some examples of material that we included in the publication because the publication is very much a hybrid of a catalogue and a monograph and included early examples of Polynesian queer representations. 
here's uh, the cover of the publication and I very much tried to commission new writing by predominantly uh, Polynesian writers such as Nahuya Te Awakotaku, the Emeritus Professor and Maori uh, writer. Around the exhibition, we wanted to build discourse, and so we staged two Talanoa. Talanoa is a Pan Pacific word that means open and transparent dialogue. And we wanted to bring critical discourse to not only Yuki's exhibition, but the core themes of indigeneity, sovereignty, small island ecologies, and emergency climate crisis in both Venice and in the next iteration in Sydney. This is some information on what a talanoa is. It's very much a non-hierarchical way of delivering uh, dialogue and symposia. The exhibition is currently on display in Sydney at the Powerhouse Museum on Gadigal land until December 31st, in case any of you are visiting Sydney. And for Sydney, I very much wanted to recurate the exhibition and include an expanded version of Paradise Camp. So Yuki undertook an eight week residency in Sydney in order to realize new work and ensure that Paradise Camp had a very much a local engagement uh, aspect. So she worked not only with the collection of colonial photographs, but also with a leading renowned Samoan Sydney based drag queen called Bertha. Here is a clip of the exhibition in Sydney so you can see uh, how the exhibition um, was expanded and varied. But I guess it, in closing, I wanted to very much use the idea of care in my presentation today and, and reveal how stories from um, both the Pacific can be told from a very much a Polynesian perspective and how can we curators, as curators and art critics, be listeners, enablers, accomplices and advocates. Let's place care as the foundation of all our relationships and intertwinements and share our vulnerabilities and interdependencies as writers, art critics and humans. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference.